Welcome! Today we're going to look at five types of provenance for marine nationale watches as told through my book Marine Nationale by Watchistry. Now I first got interested in marine nationale watches by reading a Houdinki article entitled Just Because, a Tudor Submariner issued by the French Marine Nationale. This article showed a great Tudor Submariner on top of its decommissioning paperwork. And it was really that decommissioning paperwork that got me really excited about these watches because it gave you an opportunity not just to know that a watch was issued to the military, but what particular branch or maybe unit or maybe even ship or submarine that the given watch was actually issued to. And that shed a little bit more light into the stories that the watch could hold. Not long my hunt for Tudor Submariners led me along the way to many other watches issued by the French Navy. One of the great things about the French Navy is that they used, for the most part, civilian watches and then issued them to their sailors. And so you see a lot of variety in the watches that they used, as seen here. This is an overview of the fronts and backs of the 34 timepieces covered in the Marine Nationale book. So today we're going to cover six different types of provenance available for Marine Nationale or French Navy watches. There are other ways to confirm the authenticity of a watch issued to the French Navy, but these are just some that we're going to look at today. So first up, we'll look at a Longines issued to the Marine Nationale. On the left is an example with a white dial, which is pretty typical for these. On the right is a black dialed version that I acquired, and I wondered if that black dial was original. Ultimately, I don't believe it's an original dial, and it was probably replaced. But here's what I was able to learn about it. So first, looking at the case of these MN Longines watches, you see that MN is engraved on the back, along with its unique issue number, 2646 in this case. 2646 is also on the back of the upper right lug. 2646 is engraved on the inside of the case back. This assures that the case back stays with the watch case. You'll note on the movement there is a serial number and we can send that to Longines and request an extract from the archives. Longines offers this free service to collectors and it's a great resource. You can email them and usually get a pretty prompt response by email. And if you ask nicely, they'll send you a paper copy of the extract from the archives. From that, you can see that this particular example was uh, invoiced in 1948 to their subsidiary in France. Now, if you want, you can send your watch to Longines and have them prepare a certificate of origin on, and authenticity. This takes a long time and frankly can be a bit of a hassle, but you can find out a little bit more information. And on the right is what I was able to find out about this particular black dial of Longines. We can see that they confirmed that it was issued to the French Navy and the engraving on the back 2646. I asked about the dial and all I heard back from them was brass dial. Uh, again, I think that this dial was probably not the original one. And we can also see at the bottom under the watch history, they indicate that the watch was commissioned for the Marine Nationale. Next up is the Breguet Type 20 issued to the Marine Nationale. And Breguet offers a great service where for free they will provide an attestation. If you write Breguet and tell them the particulars of your watch along with some photos, you can get back an attestation confirming what they know about the watch and Breguet has great records of their timepieces. This attestation was signed by Emmanuel Breguet who is a relative of the original Breguet founder and is now taking on a conservator position with the company. We know from the attestation that this Breguet, case number 3948, was sold to the Marine Nationale's Aeronautique Navale or Naval Aviation Division in 1958 and it was number 192 of a series of 500 pieces that were specially ordered and then it was delivered in 1960. On the right upper right you can see the Corsair and this is the type of plane that uh, pilots would have worn 
the type 20 on. There's a great photo on the lower right from a book called Pilot de Corsair, and it features uh, the history of a pilot named Robert Peltier. Next up is an Omega Seamaster, also known as the Sham. The Sham was reportedly uh, a watch that was designed in conjunction with the French Navy's uh, hydrographic unit, or Sham. Sham stands for Service Hydrographique et Oceanographique de la Marine. Apologies for my French pronunciation, but S H O M. Uh, typically, these watches are seen in a Watchco variation, which is a, a company out of Australia that has a lot of uh, original Omega parts and was able to put them together into a Seamaster 200 that looks very fresh and brand new. And they're cool watches, um, but they can be distinguished from original period correct shams such as this one mainly by their bezel. You can see this original example has an acrylic bezel, whereas the watch covariants have a metallic bezel. Also on the inside of the case back, there's some differences. You can see it's a great 70s style case with the huge crown. There's a page from my book. You can get a sense of the movement and the engraving on the back. Sham, and this one has an issue number of 42. This watch came with a special paper, which I call the Service des Domains, which is basically a government auction receipt. You can see from this receipt that in 1998 in Brest, this watch was auctioned off as part of lot number 266. And there were two Omega dive watches in this lot. This is number 42. The other one, I'm not aware of its present location. You can see in the lower right that it was the Sham that was auctioning off these timepieces. Next up is a Doxa Diving Star. This one has a great yellow dial and a lot of patina from use in the French Navy. You can see on the inside of the case back, on the middle right, there's a small engraving 10-88YP. This is an important watchmaker inscription that ties this to the French Navy. To better understand the significance of the inscriptions, we need to look to Toulon. Only 100 meters from the main gate of the Marine National Base in Toulon, you'll find a barber shop at 33 Rue Victor Michelet. Importantly for collectors of Marine National timepieces, 33 Rue Victor Michelet wasn't always a barber shop. From the 1950s until the 1990s, when the Marine National Base at Toulon needed their watches serviced, they bundled them up and hauled them the short distance from the arsenal over to the watchmaker's shop, who was located at 33 Rue Victor Michelet. This watchmaker was named Yves Pastre, his initials are YP, and it's one of the few watchmakers known to have had regular contract to service timepieces of the Marine Nationale. Mr. Pastre kept detailed records of the watches he serviced, diligently no noting the date received, the make, serial number, service performed, and most interestingly, the particular military unit the watch was associated with. These records were kept in logbooks that are now known by collectors as the register. This is a copy of one of the pages of the register. You'll note in the middle of the page, an indication is made of a DOXA with serial number 10267 that was issued to a unit called AF-1. AF-1 stands for a fleet supply vessel. You can note that this service was completed on the 14th of October 1988. And again, if we look at the upper right, we can see the inscription on the inside of that DOXA that corresponds to 1088 with the initials YP. This is how we know that that DOXA was issued to the Marine Nationale. Next up is a Triton Spiro Technique. You can see this watch has a beautiful acrylic bezel, a very unique crown at 12, and an engraving on the back with an issue number of 544. This Triton is also in the register. You can see in the middle of the page that Triton 544 was issued to the Rhine, which is the submarine su supply vessel photographed in the upper right. We should also note in the service notes 
that Mr. Pastrate did a complete overhaul, changed the seals, and also replaced the crown and stem. In the lower right, you'll notice an interesting Rolex crown on this Triton Spiro Technique. The original crown on the Triton Spiro Technique was a Parmentier style crown, which had an inner crown and an outer cap. This outer cap was frequently lost, and so it was a common replacement for Marine National Tritons to have their crown replaced with a Rolex crown. In my collection, I'm fortunate enough to have two really interesting pieces that are captured in this photograph here. On the left, I have a Tudor Submariner issued to the La Praia. La Praia is the submarine in the center of this photograph. We also just looked at the Triton Spiro Technique issued to the RIN, or A621. You'll notice that in the background of this photograph. So in this great photo, you can see the two watches are somewhere on these vessels. Next up is an MN-77. This is a Tudor Submariner. It was actually the first Tudor MN in my collection, and I love it. It's got a great blue dial and nice yellow hands. This watch is also in the register. You'll note in the center the many servicings by Mr. Pastre, one of which is noted in this page of the register, along with its serial number, and indicating that it was issued to the diving school or Ecole de Plongée. Next up is a Tudor Submariner MN83. This one has a great dial configuration that I call the daggers and dots. And this watch comes with another type of provenance called the decommission paper. These papers were frequently attached to timepieces that were being auctioned off from the military. I'm fortunate enough that this paper stayed with the watch. You'll note a couple of interesting things about the decommission paper. At the top, it indicates that this watch was issued to the Commando Jaubert, a special forces unit out of St. Mandrier. It also indicates the model of the watch, along with its serial number. And in the lot section, you'll see that this watch was issued to the Marine Nationale in 1983. And you'll note the slash 01 indicates that it was issued in the first quarter of 1983. At the bottom, you'll see its stamp that it was auctioned off in Brest in 1999. I'm fortunate enough in my collection to have two really interesting Submariners that are just two serial numbers apart. On the left, you can see 63117, which was issued to a demining unit out of Toulon. This example has entries in the register. I'll note that the bezel on this watch was a replacement bezel. When I received that watch, it had a very fresh bezel put on it by the previous owner. It didn't leave the military that way, and it just didn't look right, so I found a, a period correct one with an appropriate amount of patina for this watch. On the right is 63119. It's a black dial daggers and dots with a lollipop issued to Commando Javert. On the left, you can see the copy of the register for 63117 and on the right, the decommission paper for 63119. For our last type of provenance, we'll look at paperwork that accompanies given timepieces. In this case, we have a quartz chronometer by Omega issued to the Sham. From the paperwork accompanying this marine chronometer, we know that it was issued to P684, a patrol boat called La Capricieuse. On the right is a period advertisement from Omega. In the bottom, you'll note the marine chronometer. This marine chronometer came with a great logbook indicating its accuracy every 30 days for a period of over 30 years. This is just one page from that book and you'll note the many time checks every 30 days and in this particular one in 1994 the watch was synced with an atomic clock. This is some great artwork that I came across in my search for marine national pieces. This is a painting of two submarines, La Praia and Augusta, in Lorient in 1992. This was painted by Patrick de Camps, who was in the French Navy, whose assignment it was to go and paint various scenes of marine life. On the right, you'll see two watches in my collection that match these two submarines, La Praia and Augusta. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you'd like to learn more, you can check out my book, Marine Nationale, 
which is available not only in English, but also professionally translated into French. I've also made a book on vintage ZRC pieces. You can find these at watchistry.com or in the notes below. Please like and subscribe and have a great day.